TF2 has some bad weapons. Some are just downright horrible, like the Righteous Bison or the Pompson. The Bison has such low damage that it has not even memeing potential. The Pompson has that, but is unusable because of the slow projectile speed and the fact that your projectiles get blocked by your teammates. Some weapons are considered bad by comparing them to their alternatives, for instance the stock fire axe for pyro. Every other melee unlock for pyro is better, with the 30 degree being a direct upgrade to stock, so there's no reason to use it. It seems we are stuck with the weapon balancing that we currently have, because Valve has made the last change in that regard long ago and it seems the developers won't mess around with weapon stats ever again. So what weapon is considered bad by the TF2 community that is actually the most underrated? This has got to be the Brass Beast. This weapon is getting so much hate and people make fun of it all the time. We all know the joke that you are basically a sentry when you use the Brass Beast. Most players that are new to TF2 figure out the weapons and test them. When they try out the Brass Beast, they might be curious because of the good upsides the weapon has. But once they try it out for just one fight, they never touch the weapon again. This almost was the case for me as well. When playing heavy, the only choice was basically whether you play stock minigun or Tommy's love. The sandwich was also an auto pick, and the only melee weapons worth using were the fist of steel, the groove, and if you're feeling especially funky, the holiday punch. The killing doves of boxing together with Tommy's love are a thing too, I guess. Only by seeing some YouTube videos for people using the Breast Beast successfully, I tried it out once more and absolutely demolished a whole server. I was surprised about the huge amount of extra damage it dealt and the damage resistance which made you very hard to kill, especially with the medic. There was a strong upside but also a big downside which made it interesting for me to try to minimize the downsides and maximize the upsides for full potential. Sure, the upsides are strong but the downsides are really harsh. A 50% slower spin up time and a 60% slower movement speed while the breath beast is spun up. This makes you almost immobile while spun up and the spin up time of 1.3 seconds is significantly longer than that of the stock minigun of 0.87 seconds. These two downsides are the reason why the weapon is considered bad and why people don't give the weapon a chance. If you think about it, the weapon takes heavy as he normally is with a slow move speed, slow rev up time, high damage output at close to medium ranges a big health pool and puts all these things to the extreme. It makes regular heavy a super heavy. You move even slower, rev up even slower, deal even more damage and have even more health due to the damage resistance. In most weapon reviews on YouTube, the creators mostly come to the agreement that the Breast Beast is a bad weapon. That's where I come in and I have to say no, you are wrong. The weapon itself is good, you are just bad at playing with it. The freaking bison is a bad weapon, because its stats and damage suck. Breast Beast has the highest damage in the game, let that sink in for a while. The weapon is bad if you play the exact same way as you would with stock or Tomislav. You will get mowed down, backstabbed or especially headshot in no time. You obviously have to adjust your playstyle and adapt to the changes the weapon brings to use it successfully. My Breast Beast has over 12k kills. So I know the weapon inside out and I guarantee you that it is great in any situation if you know how to use it. Most TF2 YouTubers reviewing the Breast Beast said some stuff that is just plain wrong. From it shouldn't be fired at longer ranges to you shouldn't use it on offense. Of course you can and should fire from ranges. The minimum damage is 6 and not 5 from stock minigun, assuming you are not in a sniper sideline. Snipers will pick you off immediately, because you basically stand still by rev up. Getting some chip damage from a range in is very good with the Breath Beast, stealing kills or helping out your teammates fights. It's especially good to use it on burning enemies to ensure their demise. The other statement that the Breath Beast shouldn't be played on offense is just nonsense. I won't even say anything, the footage alone should be enough. While seeing some questionable weapon reviews on YouTube, I noticed that the weapon's upsides are always downplayed. 
it's not that big of a damage increase. My man, 20% is the biggest damage increase that you get in the game. The 20% damage resistance that takes effect when you are revved up and under 50% health is not even mentioned as a big upside most of the time. It's a huge difference if you die to a 3 direct pipe or 4. So let's get back into damages for a bit. The Brasbys out damages Doc and Tommy's love on short medium ranges. For a complete visual analysis of the three weapons being fired at the same time I recommend this video, the link to it is in the description. After a certain range the Tommy's love deals a little more damage with the distance to the target increasing. The Tommy's love out damages the Raspies on range but not by a lot. No. What the fuck? How the fuck did you get a brass beast to heal zone? Bro, he's a giga shot for using brass beast. Don't you respect That guy's not respect human. So, how can you make the brass beast work? Basically, you have to consider yourself heavy on steroids while you're using the brass beast. As I explained earlier, each trait heavy has becomes pushed to the extreme. Know that you are taking a big risk when you are not revved up. 1.3 seconds rev up time is an eternity in a life or death situation. A scout can easily take 3 to 4 meat shots at you, and most other classes can deal enough damage to kill you before you can even retaliate. You better rev up when you are at an area where you expect an enemy. Jump rev all the time. Most good heavy players will use this tactic already. But with the Wrath Beast, you have to jump rev every corner. You want to be ready when you see enemies, not wait for 1.3 seconds. Jump rev so that you can land where the corner is, so that you can start shooting fast. Be even more wary of snipers and spies. These two classes are your counters as heavy. But the Wrath Beast heavy has to be a lot more careful and wary because of your minimal movement while shooting, which makes you the easiest target. Turn around frequently and in irregular intervals, spike check all the time and be very careful of sniper sidelines. You survive 3 quick slope shots due to the damage resistance, but an experienced sniper will charge his shot sufficiently. Use vertical distance whenever you can. Jump down from a height and rev up while you jump, to be ready to fire once you land. This is usually a big surprise. It negates your slow rev up time and puts you in close range to your targets where you have the advantage. Change position frequently. You don't want to be predictable. Hop in, jump rev, do a chunk of damage, possibly one or two kills, then go out. Many new Raspies players just stay in the same spot and shoot until the ammo runs out or they get killed, probably the latter. You don't want to be that guy. Turn around frequently. Situational awareness comes not by having ultra instinct, but by looking around you. You are the easiest target for spies if you just look and shoot in the same direction all the time. Don't just turn around and look around you because of spies, there are also scouts and soldiers taking flanks that you gotta have an eye out for. Use your gifts wisely. As a chat brass beast heavy, you dish out a lot more damage than the average soul boy heavy, so you can take fights more confidently and aggressively. Taking out medic power class combos or entire sentry nests, including the NG, is not out of the ordinary, especially if you are gifted with random crits, which are especially devastating on the brass beast. Bonus tip. When an enemy jump scares you while you are not in shooting mode, don't even bother revving up. Whip out your melee and punch them out. Due to the slow rev up time, you won't be able to kill them in time, no matter if they fight or flee. I recommend this loadout while you use this weapon. The banana has a short cooldown, so you can heal up more frequently. With the slow rev up time, it's dangerous to throw your lunchbox items to teammates anyway, so just throw the banana when it's absolutely safe or in extreme situations, for example when your medic is burning. The gloves of running urgently are absolutely indispensable for me. You gotta get to the front lines faster. You are already so slow on the rev up, at least get to your destinations faster. Use it conservatively though, or you might be at a too low health pool when the fighting starts. 
I recommend to stop using it when you have sunk down to 200 HP so you can have enough time to get back to 300. When you get pocketed by a medic, you can have the Gru out longer due to the overheal. The Gru can also be used as a last resort to charge fast at enemies and punch them out or when you receive a stock uber and you are not in position to get to the enemies faster. Where there is light, there has also be shadow. It's not always sunshine with the Wrath Beast. There are a few hundred instances where I thought, if I had used stock or Tommy's love, I would have won that fight or got that fleeing enemy running behind a corner. At the same time, there is an equal amount of instances where I thought to myself, I'm happy to have had the Wrath Beast here. It made me win that fight. The downsides of this weapon are hefty, but the upsides are also very strong and keep it in balance, in my opinion. Stock Uber is bad on a Breath Beast Heavy if you have a lot of distance to the enemies. It's better to communicate that to your medic so he ubers somebody else. The medigans you love as a Breath Beast player are the Vaccinator and the Crits Creek. The Vex, in conjunction with your damage resistance, makes you super hard to kill, assuming the Vex player can switch resistances well enough. Crits are a whole different story. Normal random crits deal 32 damage and can shred down even snipers easily from ranges, but a crits creek is super fat on the Breath Beast Heavy. Every enemy in sight gets obliterated. A good medic that knows how and when to use the crossbow can work really well with the Breath Beast Heavy, because the burst healing with the damage resistance setting in again and again can basically keep you alive forever. Like 99% of TF2 players, you might have written off the Wrath Beast, just like I did at one point. I suggest you give it another shot. With a different playstyle, you can become a beast yourself. I played so long with it, that I feel uncomfortable when using Stock or Tommy's Love, because the damage feels so puny, and it feels like I have a lot less HP. With the right method, and a just playstyle, you can use the weapon with the highest damage per second in the game to its fullest potential. Once you know how to use it, the weapon becomes insanely powerful, which is why it is so underrated. With that, we reach the end of this video. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end. Like the video if you liked this controversial take on the weapon. Please let me know your opinion in the comments and subscribe to see weekly content. Bye!